So, uh, Dr. Justin Davies, uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I will uh, introduce Dr. Justin Davies. He's the uh, professor at uh, Hammersmith Hospital in uh, Imperial College, uh, London. Uh, he will be uh, presenting, or actually we'll be discussing with him, uh, the data of uh, the Define FLIR trial. He's he actually presented the data uh, yesterday in the late uh, breaking trials in the ECC um, about the Define uh, FLIR study, uh, which on behalf of the Define FLIR investigators. So, uh, welcome. Uh, we're very glad to have you. So, uh, the f I will start with a uh, with the first question. Um, would be uh, just briefly, what's IFR compared to FFR? So IFR is a pressure wire tool for detecting stenosis severity, uh, which is very similar to FFR, performed using similar wires and on a similar consoles, but we're without the requirement for administration of adenosine. That's oh. the key difference. So basically the, the, the use of medication? Without the use yeah. of medication. Uh, we know that there's been much work over the last four or five years by groups from all, the, uh, all around the world who have really built the foundations for these studies. And what they've found is that if you compare FFR and IFR against other reference standards, so coronary flow reserve, SPECT, PET, whichever reference standard you choose, there's never a diagnostic advantage to administering adenosine. Okay. So that's a very key you know, point. So there. mainly the power to uh, detect ischemia is probably the same? It's probably the same, yeah. But of course, the, one of the rationales for doing the study is there's great data out there on FFR with FAME and FAME2, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, but you need to show to apply new clinical technique when there are other techniques out there that you have s clinical outcome data as well. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the next thing I was going to ask is the non-inferiority margin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the tri the, for the trial it was 3.4. How would you comment on that? So you know, 3.4 is essentially very much in line with the low end of the spectrum of most of the, the uh, clinical trials which are out there. So Excel, Noble, uh, mm -hmm. it's about the same proportion as those. If you look at other studies, such as the NOAC studies, they're far higher. Uh, you even look at the comparative studies between uh, stents, recent comparison drug eluting mm -hmm. stent studies, the margin's much, much bigger. So I think we're conservative. Um, we're With the fine flare, we're looking at very high thresholds. You're looking for a 95% threshold. Right. So a lot of certainty there. And uh, I think it's very much in keeping with, with what the general field is. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then um, I think when you look at the data, the uh, for the def you know for the group who got uh, you, you know the the IFR, 53% uh, of the patients were actually deferred, uh, compared to 47% uh, were the patients who had uh, uh, FFR used. So um, what you, what would you comment on that? Like what was the, the difference? Okay. So first things first. This is the first study ever performed in a clinical distribution of physiology. First randomized clinical trial. So FAME and FAME2 have patient populations which are much more severe. In fact, they're patients who have already been uh, selected for PCI, who then had the physiology measurements made. Define Flare and its sister study, IFR Sweetheart, were, had patients selected in whom clinicians were uncertain if the lesion was physiologically significant or not, and thereby whether their patient would benefit from stenting or not. So, it's a real-world clinical population right. of how we use clinical uh, these tools in, in clinical practice. Now, when you use these tools, uh, we see, as you've said, the differences right. between uh, the deferral rates with IFR and FFR, and there's slightly more patients deferred with IFR right. than FFR. And this is very interesting because it potentially means we've got a tool now which is slightly more sensitive to select lesions uh, which are going to potentially benefit more from stenting. Of course, that all hinges on the fact that you have similar MACE rates. Right. So if you right. have worse MACE rates, then obviously then it may not be so good. You're probably missing, yeah. But if you do have similar MACE rates, then it, then it opens the door to the fact you're being more specific and sensitive, uh, potentially you know, reducing costs and preventing, you know, in the longer run, the costs of having more stents implanted in patients uh, in which you then have problems with, problems with the instant resinosis and late stent thrombosis and so on. Yeah. You know, thanks for coming uh, and we appreciate it.